What's up you guys? So in this one, I'm going to show you how to use the CVX opt toolbox, which is a free software package for convex optimization in Python. I'll show you how to get your environment started and solve basic convex optimization problems using this beautiful package. So to check out the website, it's cvxop.org. And the contributors of this package are mainly Martin Anderson, Joachim Dale, and Levin Vandenberg. So Levin Vandenberg is one of the co-authors along with Stefan Boyd of the book entitled Convex Optimization. So to get CVX opt on your machine, say you're using a Mac, you open terminal, and if you're using a Windows, you can open your command window and type pip3 install cvx op. Now, since I have it on my computer, then there you go. And if not, you'll have to wait a bit depending on your connection. So assuming you have it at this point, so let's go to a certain folder and let's create a folder called, let's say, trying out cvx opt. Then I'll cd into that and I'll open my Jupyter notebook. So let's create a new file and call it main, right? So let's solve one basic convex optimization program that is a linear program. So let's say I'm interested in solving the following linear program. So the first step here is to recognize that we can actually write this as minimizing a C transpose X, right? subject to all those constraints could be packed up into one ax less than b constraint right so the way you can do this is recognize that 2x1 plus x2 could actually be written as c transpose x where your x contains your variables x1 and x2 your c will then contain the coefficients of each of your variables so in our particular case it will be two and one right and over here just to align with ax less than b we have to flip the greater than or equal constraint to a less than or equal right and how could we do this well all you have to do is multiply by a minus on both sides right so this guy becomes a minus and we get a less than a minus two right likewise the third constraint we multiply by a minus on both sides to get minus x2 less than zero now we could form our a matrix as such so the first constraint could be stacked in the first row of a as minus one one right so minus one one comes from the coefficients of the first constraint and likewise if you would fill b then the first entry of b would be the right hand side of the first constraint that is one right we do the same thing for the second constraint so minus x1 so it's a minus one and a minus x2 that's a minus one facing minus two so minus two sits in the second entry of b in the third constraint we don't have an x1 so it's a zero followed by a minus one and a zero and a b and last but not least we've got a one and a minus two and a four okay so that's it we've got our a matrix our b vector and our c vector and we could then use jupiter which i have it opened on my google chrome to solve this problem so the first thing you'd want to do is from your cvx op package you'd import solvers and matrix because we'll be using that. So what I want to do right now is just copy my A, B, and C. So let's copy A. The way you can do this is simply by calling matrix, then packing in the first column of A, which is minus one, minus one, zero, and one. So minus one, minus one, zero, zero, and one, along with the second column, that is one, minus one, minus one, and minus to don't forget a second bracket to say that those two columns are actually in a matrix okay so run this and let's take a look at a it's a matrix okay good now let's fill in b which is a vector we're calling matrix it's a one column matrix one minus two zero and four there you go and c is two and one so two and one okay so we've got our a b and c now to solve it all you have to do is called solvers.lp okay 
pass it your C, A, and B in that order. Run. So the reason we're getting this is because I think those should be floats. So let me type in a point O, point O. Let's define floats instead of integers. All you have to do is just say 2.0, right? And there you go. So how could we read this? So since we're minimizing the cost function, then you could actually see that the cost is brought down at each iteration of the LP solver. Now, since we see those it iterations, then and we've got this k over t parameter, then I think this algorithm, this lp.lp .lp uses interior point methods, right? So in case you're calling dot lp as such, this is the equivalent of using cone lp, which solves cone linear programs. Now, I don't need those for the moment. Now, if you want to control the number of iterations, for example, the maximum number of iterations, then all you have to do is call options and pass, for instance, max iters to 50. So this is a dictionary key value, right? The key is max iters. That stands for maximum number of iterations. And the value is 50. For example, this will run. Let's say I put three. It terminates at three and it tells you maximum number of iterations reached. Let's say six, then optimal solution found, right? Well, let's say I want to print the solution. Do we have it anywhere here? No, I don't see it. So let's extract it from, oh, so let's save this in, in an object called Sol as such. And from Sol, I'll call X as such, and I'll print it. And there you go. This is your optimal solution. Okay, so let's say I've got this example over here. I'd want to minimize 2x1 square plus x2 square plus x1 x2 plus x1 plus x2 subject to some positivity constraints. So x1 is positive, so is x2 and x1 plus x2 is 1. So we're basically minimizing this quadratic quantity over the following region. Right? right, so the first thing to do is to write this in standard form of a quadratic program that goes as such. So all this guy would be expressed as half x transpose px, the quadratic part, plus acute transpose x, the affine part. And we can pack those guys in a linear inequality constraint, let's say gx is pointwise less than h, and this lonely equation as ax equal to b, right? So now we'd have to figure out p, q, g, h, a, and b, right? So the quadratic terms over here, x1 square, x2 square, and so is x1, x2, those fall in x transpose px. Well, if your x is x1, x2 as the previous problem, then your p will contain the coefficients as such. So p is a two by two matrix where the first entry in the first row contains the coefficient of x1 square. Okay, So I put two, but since there's a half out here, then I'll put a four. Okay, so I'll multiply all the coefficients by two. So x2 squared goes here, one times two is two. And x1, x2, well, since we have it twice, then we split it over here into half, half times two. So we'll get a one and a one. Okay, that's your P. And your Q is the linear part. So it's the coefficients of the linear terms. So one, one, your Q is a one, one right? Your G, as we did previously, would turn out to be now, since this is less than and those are greater than, then we'll multiply this by a minus, this by a minus, and this guy becomes a less than. So does this guy. Okay, then your G would turn out to be the first row contains the first inequality constraint. So minus one, zero, and a zero minus one for the second inequality constraint. Now your H is everything on the right hand side. So it's all zeros. And finally, you've got one affine equality constraint. So your A over here consists of one row of coefficients, one, one, and your B is on your right hand side. So it's a one. Now let's solve this using CVX opt. But first let's define the matrices that we have here. 
the first thing is your P. So your P goes as such matrix. So this guy is the first column. First column is four and one. And the second one is one and two, right? Now your Q is this guy. So let's define it. Q is matrix one, one. Then your G minus one, zero and a zero minus one. And your H is all zeros. Your A is one, one, so one, one. And your B now notice that I'm defining all quantities as matrices, even though B is just a scalar. Well, the heck. So solvers.qp this time, that stands for quadratic program. We pass it the following order, P and Q, then G, H, then A and B. And there you go. The optimal solution is found. Well, what is it? Let's print it as such. Solver of X. And there you go. 2.5 times 10 to the power minus one. So it's a 0 0.25 and a 0 0.75. The minimum cost function is evaluated as 1.87, okay? Of course, CVX opt could be used to solve many programs such as quadratic cone programs and linear cone programs, not to mention second order cone programming, and semi-definite programs. You're going to see me using this toolbox more frequently throughout my lectures, as I think it is more beneficial for students who do not have access to commercial tools such as MATLAB. Now, this is free. It's, it's open source. And I think, I mean, I should pass a lot of applications using open source software. So that's where CVX opt comes in. So thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial could get you started on using CVX opt. I'll leave the link to the documentation of CVX opt in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, leave a like on the videos. Also consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much and I'll see you in future lectures.